Yeah, Fato Lofa to its uh, Tim Tafunga here. Yeah, interesting development since the um, my last broadcast on last discussion on the Ukrainian conflict. I've just come back to Brisbane from uh, doing some errands uh, elsewhere in Queensland. So I've just flown in a couple of days ago and uh, just kept up with what's going on in Ukraine. Just uh, realised on the news today that it has been announced that Australia is deploying a, oh, what is it, a couple of platoons of uh, troops to train Ukrainian troops over at uh, Ukraine or United Kingdom, uh, which is quite interesting because uh, as Australia has deployed 70 uh, ADF uh, personnel, which I believe are um, uh, operators. Um, there, the uh, uh, General Shoigu, the minister for uh, the Russian military, had just announced today uh, via the uh, Russian Ministry of uh, of the military department of uh, the military. Um, that uh, 1.5 million Russian troops will be effectively deployed throughout Ukraine. I believe that there's about a million of them have been deployed already that are there right now. Uh, from the maps that I had already uh, discussed from the uh, Operation OWL, um, the OSINT uh, map that I, I had reviewed earlier, um, the Russians have further announced an additional 500 thousand troops uh, to, that are to be deployed into Ukraine um, within the matter of days actually so these guys have already been trained so the initial 300,000 deployment of uh, Ukrainian uh, of Russian troops from the initial um, uh, call-up was actually just the tip of the iceberg uh, because rumor had it was that uh, uh, from the initial uh, full uh, call up in September, um, they announced something like, f ooh, what was it, 28 million eligible Russians were actually part of that uh, that that mandatory call up, that uh, conscription call up by the official decree by President Putin, although they had announced 300,000 to be deployed. In, into military operations in Ukraine. That was the partial military operation. Now since uh, Russia had declared war in December, um, that had gone up to about a million, which I'd noticed before, which I discussed before, there was about uh, nine Russian armies and three military districts within Ukraine. Uh, with the announcement today by uh, General Shoigu that has confirmed that there are about a million uh, Russian troops there, not the 300,000, there's actually a lot more Russians there than what people think. Um, you got to remember, as Sun Tzu states, war is all about deception, and the Russians have deceived the Western media. There's a lot more Russian troops there than you think. Uh, so let's have a look at the map, and let's look at... Uh, the situation in Solanda, which had the uh, Mozart group, which I had mentioned, because a lot of them were there. Uh, the frontline crack troops of the Russians, the shock troops for the Russians, was, is of course the Wagner group. There's a divisional strength, which is about um, 50,000 troops. They were the shock troops that uh, stormed uh, Solanda. Uh, the, th the thermobaric uh, uh, grad rockets uh, launched from tornadoes uh, from the Russians. Uh, artillery uh, bombardment of Solander has included the salt mines, which effectively kills anything that's in there. Uh, thermobaric uh, uh, ordinances will kill anything. That is anything that breathes oxygen is dead because a thermobaric uh, ordinance will suck out every ounce of oxygen in the air within proximity of the 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 ordnance uh, explosions so they kill 
uh, zone, anything that's within that kill zone. You may avoid the initial blast through some form of barrier um, within the trenches or within a bunker, but such as the salt mines, you can't breathe. So if you, you die from asphyxiation and lack of oxygen, and that's the purpose of the thermobaric uh, ordinances, and that's how they cleared the salt mines of Solanda very easily. Uh, you don't need to send in troops. Anybody in there is a canary. You're a canary without uh, um, oxygen. You're dead. And that's it. That's what's happened in the salt mines in Solander. That's why they couldn't defend it. It's impossible. So you may be able to hide in there and breathe the artificial air within there. But uh, when a thermobaric uh, ordnance explodes within the proximity of that area, anything within there, it sucks up all the air. You die from asphyxiation. So that's that's the situation. That's that's modern day warfare, um, and so if we look at the the map, you'll notice that Solander has fallen, or at least has been liberated. The DPR are, are happy with with the liberations of their people. Bakhmut is next, and further f further west, they're heading over to uh, Kramatorsk, which would be within uh, February, mid February, March, and April in the latest. 1.5 million Russians will garrison all of the Russian Federation. The EU, NATO have no other options either to declare war on Russia. That's the only way they can defeat Russia and to oust Russia from the Russian Federation in the annexed territories. It isn't going to work. You've got to remember that the DPR and the LPR are actually culturally and ethnically Russian people. They speak Russian. They're, they are ethnically Russian people. And that is the reason why I've said that in all the conflicts that America has ever been involved in and NATO and Australia in the recent uh, uh, decades since World War II have all been wars in which America has lost simply because the locals always win. Vietnam, Korea, anywhere, Afghanistan, the Taliban and so forth, the locals always win no matter how long it takes. 20 years down the track, the locals always will win. That's the same with the Donbass. The Donbass, the locals, are Russian people. It's always been Russian people. It's never been Ukraine. Crimea was given to, to Ukraine in 1954. The Donbass was given to Ukraine in 1922 with the Ukrainian Socialist uh, Republic. In 1922, mm -hmm. Russians have always lived there. Ukrainians can argue the point to about, you know, 500 years ago or 300 years ago. But the point is that the Russians are there now. They all speak Russian. They don't speak Ukrainian. Locals always win. All right. So looking at that map, let's have a look. Eh? Okay. This is the 18th of uh, January, 2023. Uh, the situation in Ukraine has uh, slightly changed ever so slightly. But the point is... The uh, Russians are still advancing and, and they're still involved in their winter offensive, all right? Now, what has actually happened since I last spoken? Uh, Solander has been liberated, so let's have a look at Solander. The salt mines there, as I had mentioned before, with thermobaric uh, uh, ordinances, Mate, anything that's in there. This is not like Vietnam, where the Viet Coms could hide within the uh, those tunnels, as little uh, uh, rodents uh, within the within those tunnels. And during World War Two, and you needed your desert your your tunnel rats to fend them out. Uh, with thermobaric uh, ordinances, you don't need to. You just clear them out by throwing things in there, and uh, watch it explode. Now, what has happened? This uh, map is, hasn't been uh, altered, although there's been a lot of uh, changes. Uh, that red zone uh, is indicative of Russian line of control. The blue zone is the Ukrainian line of control. Uh, Perutny uh, here, Russia has already claimed it as uh, controlled by them. Although, according to the uh, Operation Owl mapping, that hasn't been confirmed. Now, as we go towards uh, Opitni, we can confirm, according to this map, 
that the Russians are in control of Opitni. Now, the Georgian Legion, there's only a very few of them left. It's a battalion strength that has been well and truly degraded. Uh, the Jaeger Infantry Brigade is well and truly degraded, as well as the 30th Mechanized uh, Brigade. Very much uh, not a brigade at all. They're effectively almost combat ineffective. Now the third as of assault brigade, which I have been following intensely for obvious reasons, they were meant to be in Klishiska. They're no longer there. They've backed off to this uh, little defensive position, which uh, a lot of uh, trench lines up along this region. As has been pointed out by Weep Union and the uh, the uh, uh, the other uh, analysts who have been on their open source intelligence uh, mapping uh, uh, video blogs on YouTube, they've also been following the the uh, current uh, tactical. Uh, mobilizations and movements of both Ukraine and Russia since uh, well since it's, it began they've been talking about this uh, situation here Klishishka uh, that as of uh, Brig Assault Brigade uh, were very strong last week and they were defending kind of resiliently and they were even making inroads by degrading by halting the uh, the advance of the uh, Russians for a while they are no, no longer combat effective anymore. They're all retreating. 28th Mechanized Brigade has retreated. The terror unit have done their dirty deeds and they repelled the Russian advance for a period with their drone attacks. Um, they're now basically combat ineffective as well because a lot of their drones, their Mavix have been shot down. And so they're, they're ineffective at this moment in time and they're retreating. So now uh, Krishivka in a matter of moments will be effectively ineffective in the, in the next, uh, the next uh, uh, few, few weeks if not days. So the Wagner group, uh, whilst they've lost quite a lot uh, since uh, Solinda, Solinda, they're now moving around uh, Berkivka uh, from northwest, enveloping the Bakhmut from the north, as well as advancing directly from from this road, uh, heading towards the main CBD of Bakhmut. And this here is indicative of what's about to uh, transpire in the next week or so. Uh, the Russians should liberate Bakhmut uh, within oh, mid-February, um, if not sooner. Uh, today, uh, Shoigu has announced the 1.5 million garrison force. It is a garrison force. It's not a force to invade Ukraine. It is to garrison the Russian Federation and its territories uh, to prevent any uh, bold uh, uh, counter attacks and counter offences from from the uh, Ukrainians and NATO mercenaries. Although NATO have announced uh, more military supplies, mate, they're just cutting their nose to spike their faces, and that's what's going to happen. And we're going to be negotiating the terms of surrender of Ukraine in the, in the foreseeable future and say maybe April, eh? That'll do for now.